Anyway, I'll call the meeting to order. Make a motion to approve minutes of the previous meeting. I'll second that motion. Motion has been made and seconded to approve minutes. All those in favor say aye. 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 All ayes. The minutes are approved. Uh, on the agenda, I'd like to amend the, the agenda for a discussion with the county engineer about our policy of removing dirt from road, road ditches. take any action but wanted to have a discussion about it and I, I talked to the engineer by phone yesterday. He's aware that I've got that interest. I will make a motion to include uh, on our agenda the discussion of uh, driveway and uh, dirt removal of uh, county roadways. I'll second it. The motion has been made and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 All ayes. I'll make a motion to amend or to approve the amended agenda. I'll second that. Motion has been made and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 The agenda is approved. I guess the first order of business we need to canvass the city elections. I don't know how you guys normally do this. There's the actual canvas. You got the, a list of the results there too. So. Do it by one, just do each city separately. So, normally, okay. Done it. okay. Auburn, Cynthia Finley, 47, Justin Potoff, 27. The totals are actually at the bottom. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, there's, there's absentee votes included oh. in there as well. Okay. Cynthia Finley, 47, Justin Potoff, 44, Randy Schulte, 50, Rick Carlisle, 36, Robert Thieven, 21, Dave Potoff, 1, Todd Partridge, 1. Melissa Freeze, 13. Michael Bailey, 8. Corey Bosma, 6. And then they're identified as scattered right ins, 6. Mary Ann Brinkman, 45. Scattered right ins in that category of three. Moving on to the Lakeview City Council and Tim Laney, 100, 110. Oh, excuse it's, me. It's yeah. on the bottom. Right? Yeah, 112. And Terry Reese, 195. Ken Steinkamp, 217. No, wait, 226. Excuse me. Dave Waltman, 263. And scattered writings of seven. Nick Albright, 25. Nelda Bartles, 25. Larry Kuhn, 24. Jeff Ellerbrock, 22. 
Tim Huddleston, 25. Scattered right ends, 2. Brian Pibble, 26. Sac City, Susan McCollum, 163, Tom McGinney, 433, Denise Opsel, 60, Bruce Perry, 483, Shirley Phillips, 105, Scattered Right Ends, 4. Hollingren, 87, Kenneth Cruz, 105, Lyle Noble, 154, Ray Voss, 27, Brian Woodkey, 84, and the scattered right ends of three. And the city of Wall Lake. Council, Ray Beckman, 84, Ron Blair, 137, Albert Swans, 90, and they're scattered right ins of uh, three, and for mayor, Steve Drubengay, 143, and they're eight scattered right ins. We need to, we have to sign this in the back. I think it's in the front, isn't it? It's in the front. Inside the front cover. Abstract the folks, oh. and I don't know who. I think I 
think just you have to sign them, I think. I think he did all the, he signs the, he just signs the, the, the certificates. Certificate, I think. And you all, all three sign, sign the, the abstracts? The abstracts yes. If I recall. I think you're right now, but yeah. <clears throat> Nobody's left me in charge of that part before. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we signed your name for a few. Is this your first canvas? Yeah, nobody's left me in charge of this part before. <laughs> <laughs> Completed with the street project? For the most part, uh, there's always, you know, the final negotiation of you know, settling all of the financial side of things. That's the most important long. Uh, I believe the communication I can bring back is we'll do the grant the seating. Because they want to charge for I think part of the contract they want to charge thirty five hundred dollars for the seating. And then uh, the other thing is painting uh, on the, the white dotted lines. I think we're going to hold for spring to do that since uh, one. I thought it was done. No, no. It, 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 and you don't have to do it in too many areas, but there were some locations where the white dotted lines were removed. But uh, between the discoloration difference and the fact that for the next six months they're going to spend most of the time under snow and ice, <laughs> it just didn't make much sense to spend the money right now. We believe it's easily identifiable for them. We, we, got a, we had a situation where they painted late and then it didn't dry, and, and it, that's better not to do that. Yeah. So we think we usually <clears throat> do a mutual process between us and the county where we share costs of the guy coming in and doing painting. So I think this spring we'll have them do some additional painting for us. On this project, we share the painting? No, no, no. 
annually when you bring in the guys to do the lines, usually Mike contacts us and we That's, what, that's what I thought, right? <laughs> yeah, we do once a year, we do a... Ago, west of Wall Lake, they got the center line wasn't in the, in the center. center. No, really. <laughs> for the for the most part, <laughs> we got one pretty good. The, the, um, we had one time where it, um, it was done late and it didn't say it didn't get enough heat to cure it. But all in all, this has been a pretty smooth process. Yeah, it looks. We like even worked a couple of Saturdays and Sundays to try to stay ahead of the mm -hmm. job, therefore I shut my mouth. <laughs> Sometimes it's best just to know when to quit. That's a, that's a good thing to know. <laughs> I'm still learning. <laughs> Somebody should teach my husband that too. <laughs> Got to be getting close to the bottom of the pile. Yeah, huh? <laughs> a lot of council seats. Yeah, there were. came into the county 
was requiring that he would help, you know, be happy to help. Provide some mutual yeah. aid type of scenario. And I think he's going to talk to the board a little bit about um, we, you know, are we're moving towards you know, deciding whether we can afford a, a full time economic development person or a part time. <coughs> talked about uh, once the board decides what type of position we want to offer, you know, uh, can we go out in the market and find somebody sure. to come into Sac County or Sac City and, and fill that position. So, you know, in general we've been, we've been spending a little bit more money than our revenues are bringing in. So that's an issue, you know, unless the, you know, my own personal feeling is unless the cities and the county, of course, want to contribute more than they have traditionally, we have to kind of live within that, that budget amount, which is about 95000 The count, Sac County puts in 79600 That's been our contribution towards it for, I don't know, the last six years. Four five and yeah, well, you know what Sac City yeah. puts in, and, and uh, we get that's you know that's the bulk of our revenue. And, uh, of those of course, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> so you know, Linda's on a uh, Cavanaugh is on a re kind of a reduced uh, right. timetable, and uh, so. So it sounds like to me, kind of, and uh, like the endowment side, uh, you know, which is starting to, you know, get some different membership uh, compared to SETV. For example, uh, Reed Irwin is on that board, and she's been attending the monthly meetings for two or three months. Yeah. So. And our endowment, we we're affiliated with the Greater Des Moines Endowment. And uh, in the last six months, we've taken measures to leave that entity. And Carroll County Endowment Board is now, the, they're qualified and we're affiliated with, with them. And the transfer of funds from the Greater Des Moines, the funds that you know, can be grant, granted out. Uh, They've been transferred to Carroll, and that's gone pretty well. Chris Mason from early is uh, in charge of the endowment communications. He's for, and Nancy Jansen, city clerk at Lytton and Auburn, has kind of taken over. It's kind of like acting, not acting director, president. So, so we're trying to find our way from uh, when we have a full-time director uh, and a full-time assistant to something else. Sure, sure. I just I had council members who have been asking me if I knew anything about what the status of SCT you know, was and sure it was designation. We're kind of examining. You know, certain aspects of the budget. You know, we have three or four phone bills. We're trying to consolidate some of the services, uh, uh, copying machine, maintenance agreements. And so, and, you know, I think, you know, we have a good, good attendance on, on that board, and, uh, and things are going you know, really pretty well. It's different. You know, before, you know, both boards were kind of dominated, you know, when you have a, a director, it, it tends to, well, you know, you just tend to rely a lot on the director. And sometimes the director can dominate the, the outcome of the meetings and things. So it's, it's good to... Would you anticipate that the board, by the end of the year, probably going to have a clearer picture about 
clear about it when we do it. Well, you know, I, I would say, you know, in January, December, uh, well, for, you know, I think for a variety of reasons that the supervisors, we work on budget and that, and bad time to have. Yes. So, you know, I think it'd be helpful if the board has a little clearer idea, you know, where we're going as far as personnel and cost. You know, if, if it's such a thing that, you know, it's the feeling of the board that we want a full-time director, possibly, you know, we'll have a clearer idea, but then how much that would possibly cost, how much it would cost to recruit that person. You know, one thing about you have the cost of the recruitment and, and from talking to people in that uh, business or they might not only, you know, they might move to, to South County and it wouldn't be unlikely they might leave after three or four years. Or we've had a, a person that's been, you know, she grew up, surely grew up in South County and, you know, so uh, they're University of Northern Iowa has a, a search, a person that helps cities and counties look for a person like this. So, does that answer some of your questions? Sure, sure. We just had, like I said, a very context. <laughs> Carroll County and, and Buena Vista County, because of their size and a large, you know, it's they they do it differently, and, and their budget's different. Uh, Calhoun County and Pocahontas County are similar <coughs> in geograph geographic footprint and population in South County, and they it's hard to compare apples to apples. Because their director. Might, in addition to working with economic development, might work with zoning or you know, like somewhere to how we divide duties up somehow. So. I know back in. And you can't share, you know, I think it's really not probably good business or logical to share an economic development person with another county because, you know, how can you wear two hats? Yeah. If it comes down, you know, we're both on Highway 20 and. It, it would be nice to split the cost, but you would just have a, a, a an issue all the time, I'm sure. I can see that. Well, I know in my own research I did earlier this year, uh, it, there were a lot of different models used by a lot of it. The, the apples to apples issue was something that's very difficult. So, in, in your in your research, what what kind of models did you see? I mean, what what what's out there as far as? Well, I, I saw, all, all, for instance, you have like I, Ida County, which they have a direct staff size for Ida County. Um, you had a couple other counties where they had more, they had full time staff, but one unique caveat to them was they had a lot more private focused investment in the organization and um, and so the relationship was a little bit different. And, you know, I would argue ours is ninety nine percent, ninety eight percent of the funding comes from public entities. Um, some of these I saw had as, as little as 40% coming from the public entity. So, of course, their focus and expectations were very different than what we were using. Pocahontas, for instance, which was mentioned, uh, I know the city of Pocahontas um, has a different relationship. They have a local person who they use for certain uses, and then you have the county kind of has its thing going on, and I think to a large degree the city kind of has somebody that is primarily for their services. They were a little bit of use, but I don't think quite as much. So yeah, you, you see different counties going about in different ways. And, um, and it sounds like to me what I'm hearing here is one thing about the survey that I really enjoy is it gives us all an opportunity as stakeholders in the process to kind of discuss and kind of look at what we all think the vision of SETD should be looking for. And I hope the investor's voice will be what the board would want to hear. One thing, you know, some things that have come out is that um, 
amount of time this person needs to spend on lobbying for transportation issues. And I, you know, Highway 20 and types of, you know, how much time do we really need to spend on that type of It's kind of, you know, as I understand, you know, Shirley's still, Shirley Phillips is still really involved with Highway 20 attends meetings and, and she's always been you know, very involved in transportation issues and attending you know, hearings and things like that. So. Well, thank you. Yeah. So, you know, I think the, the group's been really fo focusing one thing on the endowment, we don't want to miss any opportunities or make any missteps that would jeopardize the flow of funds from that to these in the county. And I think that's going on. What, uh, what changes are you making that would ensure that? Not necessarily changes, Curtis, as much as you know, our director is very active in the timelines and forms that had to be filled out and when projects were done, you know, check to make sure they followed through with their application and and things like that. Yeah. You know, the different timelines and um, you know, and it, you know, we talked about leaving the Greater Des Moines Partnership arrangement uh, for quite a few years and we finally did it and we did it Basically, as our director was stepping down and leaving, so you know, a lot of the not day to day, but week to week things that you know came up, and Shirley and and Linda handled. You know, now Linda and board members are taking over those responsibilities. Have taken over those responsibilities. Does that answer? It? Yeah, that kind of answers that question. Um, you know, when they passed that, that legislation, there was, like a lot of legislation, there weren't clear guidelines and procedures, but they have evolved over time, and, and like a lot of bureaucratic type things, there's a lot of, there's just a lot of uh, regulations, timelines, things you have to follow and do correctly, otherwise, you know, you jeopardize the funds that you're allotted to get down. You, you talked about uh, not focusing so much on transportation issues on the SETD side. What, is there any discussion about what a possible focus might be in the future, if not transportation? Well, you know, I think you know, you know, we're all interested in the continuation of Highway 20 through South County. But, you know, I think we we want to get to a position where whether it's a full time or part time you know position, this this person would help this you know the, the towns within the county on possible projects and uh, things like well like bringing new business or industry or keeping the business industry we have and that types of things. I just, um, so this time sometimes when people, you know, when people are, you're thinking about bringing a, you know, a business into Western Iowa, they contact, they might possibly contact the city of Sac City, or they might contact the county economic development person and, and make preliminary inquiries that are, you know, somewhat, if not real confidential, that people follow, you know, a lot of people, as I understand it, that when they come into an area, they don't always, you know, let them flag up the pole and say, hey, we're coming in, we're either thinking about coming to Sac County or BB County. What can you tell us about what your water capabilities are? Yeah. You know, can your plant supply an extra 100,000 gallons of water a day? Um, well, I think, you know, everyone's just kind of curious what direction you might be going. 
in with the director. If it would be someone who just kind of waits for someone to approach them, or if they would be out actively searching for uh, entities to come in. I'm not sure I understand. Yeah, there's almost two questions. Or start over with what you just said. Oh, well, what I'm curious about <coughs> is, in the past, economic development in Sac City has seemed to be sort of a, a static thing where there's a person that just waits to be approached. In this case, in our case, it was Shirley. And I'm wondering, future directors, are you guys looking for someone with skills and going out and finding, say, businesses to come to Sac City? Or Sac County, excuse me. Yeah. Yeah, I think... I mean, obviously, the way you phrased it, I think the latter would be better rather than sitting and waiting. You know, if you go to, like, John, I don't know, like, they have events that uh, people, industries, are, they're looking, you know, you can go to, I don't want to say, like, job fairs, but industry, mm -hmm. you know, events and represent the county or the area. Uh, you know, I don't know. I, I don't have a lot of experience, personal experience, so I know. But, uh, well, if you don't I guess with limited resources, you know, you know how far, I mean, I, said, I mean, you can do a lot over the internet, and, but as far as traveling around the country and, and soliciting possible, Entities that might be interested in doing something. Contacting entities that are possibly looking to expand or move yeah. rather than just hoping they think of Sac County. Yeah. If you don't mind me saying, the way I took the survey was is it looked like to me SCTD was trying to very, not limit their scope of what they were reviewing and what their, yeah. maybe what their expectations and goals would be is that they wanted to see what. What the investors wanted out of uh, wanted to see out of SETD. That's that's the way I took the mm -hmm. survey. Yes. Does that mean that you guys are waiting for the results of the survey to be collated before you sort of decide what you want to do? Okay. Yeah, the survey. Okay. You know, I think will be good to give, try and give us an indication of what what the communities, what the county are looking for. Yeah, I don't mind saying that when I was doing my survey, one of the things I scored very poorly on was I didn't see the newsletter as meeting the goals or expectations of what I expected out of SETD. I rather than focus more directly somewhere else. So I scored the newsletter, for instance, as a non-priority compared to other things that, that were on the list. And you know, those are the type of things I would assume out of the survey they'd be looking at is what the investors think what they want out of SCTD would be a main problem. So. Do you have any sort of preliminary results about what's scoring high on the survey? Mm -hmm. you know? Is anybody, are there still some surveys out there that need to be turned in? from an IDDA, which is kind of a, a disabled uh, mental health newsletter. And um, uh, I was reading that last night um, they're now becoming very concerned that DHS didn't ask for the appropriate funding to move this thing forward. <laughs> 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 What, oh. what should have been our, the, the proposal to the governor did not include the appropriate funding necessary to make this thing go for the next year or two. Mm -hmm. I, I sat there thinking, what in the world? Um, so there, so this, this, um, this entity was 
was out promoting that that we all needed to contact uh, the governor's office and and our legislators because <laughs> it, DHS did not include the appropriate asking for the appropriate appropriation to make this thing work in the next two years. I thought they yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I wouldn't your expectation well, be that they would? Well, you know, going back to like last January when we met in Des Moines and, you know, those different funds, and I thought everything got passed that by well, the legislature that, to make it, to take at least to, I, I think, uh, I, I think that was 14, you know, 13. Well, 14. but I think that was right, Dean, but then uh, Governor Branstad vetoed a thing or two. So, but this... This newsletter indicated that DHS didn't get get the appropriate appropriation asking uh, in their budget. But it, uh, back to what uh, you had asked, um, there there was a twenty million dollar thing that got vetoed um, after last session. So that's that's just a piece of it, but um, that didn't have anything to do with the asking of DHS. I, I mean, um, that was passed by the legislature, and the governor vetoed that piece. Uh, they they were saying that DHS didn't include the appropriate asking for the governor's budget. So when they their total budget they approved and submitted wasn't large enough to didn't include that. the changes of things that. That's the way I, I mean, that's that's what they're indicating. Give me insight on what this might mean for SecCon. No, <laughs> I mean, I, I guess I'm concerned. I I think I think moving forward, unless there are a whole bunch of of new demands put on the system, that with this regional situation that we're going into, I I think we're okay. I I, I think their concern is. Um, from this article that DHS took over all the mid Medicaid piece, the state mid, mm -hmm. and then that's where the lack of funding is. That That's that's how I interpret that. Uh, as far as the locals and, and um, if if they kind of leave us alone as, as, and don't put a whole bunch of new demands in what we have to do, I think locally uh, on the piece that we're responsible for funding, we'll be okay. It's the it's the Medicaid DHS piece that I think they got serious concerns. So we'll maybe we'll get a little bit of insight this week on some of that. But um, uh, that was the first time I had really read anything that said that DHS didn't have the right ask or include the right appropriation for it, what they needed and. The, as I look at that and think that through, that to me indicates that DHS didn't get the appropriate appropriation to handle all the new Medicaid things that they're responsible for, that that we are not not responsible for. So you you would have my expectation was that that, that would have been taken care of. Why wouldn't it be? <laughs> I was about to say something so I know we can go to recess till at which time the engineer arrives. Yeah. They were gonna have that a hearing on that Jake Creek ordinance. Oh. Uh, the mirror image, I guess if I he mentioned that going on this morning in Calhoun County. Started. Yeah. Do we need the recording? No, no Renee. No. All right, she's coming. Mm -hmm. we'll we'll until you take action. Yeah, until you take action. <laughs> County through uh, building driveways in Clinton and Cook Township, checking on driveway repairs in Weaver Township, working with contractor to complete fiber installation on 290th Street west of Jackson Avenue. <coughs> Repairing road shoulders on deep 42. 
Cleaning soap closets and little ditches on 278th west of Guard. Spot gravel new areas in the East Township. Project status, uh, <coughs> 20 boxes west of Wall Lake. Uh, we've sent the paperwork in. We're just waiting for the DOT to do the audit on the project so we can make the final payment. Uh, the Boyer Bridge, Boyer River Bridge project on D-59. The project is, is uh, all set for, for the January letting at DOT. The STP project, the uh, white topping on D-59 west of Wall Lake. Uh, we've got the plans here. We need to review, approve, and, and sign the plans. We uh, still need to get an agreement completed with the railroad to get the project in February. Right? Is this going to hold, will that hold us up or not? It's, it's got the possibilities that it would. Uh, I sent that stuff to the, to the railroad. We've been having several conversations, oh, probably started way back in August, involving the DOT, the rail department, and, and uh, Harlan Aarons from the railroad. Uh, they're trying to come up with a standard format that they can use in every case. And, and uh, the railroad drafted it, sent it to the DOT, and, and the DOT more or less said, well, it's an agreement between the county and the railroad. You, know, <coughs> you can use it as you see fit. And, and that's what I gave the band to, to look through. And he didn't see any you know, glaring issues with it. And so I signed it and sent it on to the railroad a week ago, ten days ago, and we haven't heard boo from them since. So, uh, for this project to be in the February letting, final plans and all the other paperwork are supposed to be in by uh, November 19th, which is next Tuesday. So, uh, Jeez, that's a long time ahead. Yeah, that's... When you let things do the DOT, they just take more time. So, if, if we don't have an indication that we're going to get the agreement back before then, uh, DOT might let us push that, that uh, date a little bit, but uh, if, it gets, if it looks like they're not going to get it back to us in a timely <coughs> manner, like say, say they, they think it's going to be a month before they get back to us, we'll probably have to push the letting to the March letting to it it really wouldn't matter a great deal, does it? Not really. I guess you, you always you always wonder, you know, which letting will give you the best prices. <laughs> uh, most years, if if the contractor and if, if there was work out there to be uh, to fill them up, the sooner you get them let, the sure. better. That's true. But uh, everything we're hearing this year is that uh, the paving contractors are going to be really hungry for work. Uh, there's not that much work out there. They, they put restrictions on the farm to market fund, which caused some people to have to delay their projects. Mm -hmm. So um, you never know. You might get better prices in March because they didn't get anything in January and February, and they're worried about filling the schedule up. So it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's a crapshoot. No one wins the right time. But uh, <coughs> the, if, if I don't, I don't think about that. If, if worse comes to worse, what the guy from the railroad is telling me, he said, you know, if you weren't doing this as part of a DOT project, you know, we could get this agreement done and, and, and over with just about like that. Uh, why it takes them much longer with in the DOT involvement, I guess I don't understand, but... Uh, <laughs> DOT is trying to make sure that the, that the contractor understands everything he's supposed to be doing as far as getting the permit to work in the right way. You actually have to have some training uh, done so that anybody that works within the railroad right away is, is railroad approved. Uh, they're actually supposed to have a sticker on the hard hat so that the, the, the railroad guy that's out there watching knows which which guys have got the training to, to work in the right-of-way. <laughs> I mean, oh. 
And if this was a project like down that railroad that runs through Carroll, you know, that'd be yeah. one thing. But, you know, this one probably don't get five trains a week down there, but uh, they still make them go through all the same trains. So, worst comes to worst, uh, what we had intended to do, right in that stretch where the railroad is from the from the Boy River Bridge back almost damn 50 is, is six inch uh, concrete now, and it's getting in sort of bad shape. And so, as part of this project, that section we're going to tear everything out, tear the six inches out, and replace it with eight inch. And what we wanted, we're going to do is tie in <coughs> when they did that uh, railroad crossing project oh. um, three, four years ago. Maybe it's been longer than that. I don't remember. Uh, they did an asphalt taper to meet the, the railroad track, and what we were going to do was go up to the end of that asphalt taper with this project. So, uh, on the south southwest of the track, we're actually 71 foot down the center of the road from the center of the track, <clears throat> and going northeast, we were 98 feet, but because of the skew pretty sharp skew in there. We're still within the railroad right away when we do that. Worst comes to worst, uh, if we can't get this railroad agreement and we and it looks like it's going to push us past the March letting, we will uh, revise our plans and, and pull it back so we're outside of the railroad right away. And That'd then, be unfortunate. Yeah, I mean, geez. what I would try to do then was, was negotiate with local funds, with the contractor to, to do that area that we're leaving out after he gets here, negotiate with, with him. And get the, I mean, I've, I've been told by the railroad guy that you know there wouldn't be any problem doing that, and so we would just wouldn't do it as part of this project. We do it as, as a separate. But that project. that takes that takes local funds from something else. Right. Yeah. I mean, uh, I had to figure out one time how far you'd have to go. How many, how many dollars would you project? Oh, uh, well, I haven't even, I guess I haven't even figured that. Um, right now I can't remember how, what the footage was. It seems like we had to go another... maybe 80 foot <coughs> one way and... and 50 foot the other way, so, you know, you might be talking 100, say 150 foot. Um, it be big so it's, it wouldn't be a big, I mean, we'd be probably talking, you know, let's see, 150, that'd be 50 yards, 70 yards wide. I would think maybe $5,000. I can get, get it close enough. No, that's, I, I just, you know, if it, it's one thing to take 50 grand from something local, there's yeah. five, it's not that big a deal. Anyway, that's sort of where we're at with these plans. Uh, even though we're calling the white topping, there are, uh, there is that one section there that we're going to completely remove. And then, uh, West of the Boyer Bridge, uh, you've driven that. Uh, there's about a short half mile of concrete as you get uh, close to M55, and uh, when you put concrete on top of concrete, you need to have a layer in there to keep the two from bonding to each other, and so uh, the DOT has been using a. a well, Warren County did a project with it. Uh, it's a new. They use it. Actually, it came from uh, Europe. They use a a woven uh, fabric that you nail down on top of the concrete that's there, and then you put the new concrete on top, and it keeps them from tying into each other. And so we got that short section there that we're going to do that with, and see how that that paving there is in fairly good shape. Uh, it's got a little bit of. <clears throat> We've had to patch it a few places, and et cetera, but it's actually an 8-inch concrete paving that's there now. But that way, when we're done, this whole road will be you know, white 
on top all the way through. So, but, um, I think last year when we budgeted, we budgeted uh, a million two for for uh, SDP funds and a million two out of our farm market funds. And, we're starting to put the estimate together that we have to have done by next week, and we're thinking it might run a little bit more than that. But um, right now, two point four million, I think, total isn't too far off. We have uh, made a motion to approve yeah. these plans. I will make the motion to uh, approve the overlay on D fifty nine West of Wall Lake. I'll second it. Motion has been made and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 All ayes. A little sign of the plan. It's just the one page. Yep. Sign. It's one page. Okay. Okay. I'll try to keep you posted on what's happening with the railroad. But our first option would be to push it to the marsh letting and then we still can't get it. So when you call, do you talking to somebody that can give you an answer? Or um, Harley's usually pretty good about it. He, he did comment, and I think that's, that's part of why he said it would be easier to do that as a local project, that I think he could technically sign those agreements to just work within the right-of-way, where this other agreement's going to go to Chicago and mm -hmm. be reviewed, and he had said in, a, in an email earlier on that, you know, being the end of the year and end of the year things going on, he thinks, you know, it would take a little bit longer to get that approved. But, I mean, they basically, or he at least basically wrote it, the agreement, and, and we reviewed it and really didn't make any changes to it, so he would have thought it would have went on through pretty easy. But, and, and see. Um, item three there, I'm, uh, Reviewing streets and alleys in, in, to vacate in Grant City. Uh, that Presley sale down there sold a bunch of property on the on the west side. It's got a whole bunch of platted lots, blocks, streets. Uh, and I should probably talk to Jim sometime. I I don't know whether those whether there'd be any interest in, in vacating the actual platting of those blocks and what it would take to do that. Um, Marty Raff, the property he bought a couple of years ago is, is this property here, and he's been requesting that this street and this street be vacated. But then they just sold this Presley property, which basically was all of this, so all these lots. Blocks that are, are platted there. Do you know the answer to that, Renee? I, don't know. I, I, I mean, it, who, who, went, bought, who bought that property? Uh, Tepetaller, I think, is what I was told. Dale? Probably. I think so. Or gravel. You must maybe think there's gravel under there. I don't know. But uh, and they're supposed to close on it December 3rd. I'd actually had it call down to uh, Wallach Attorney. What's his name? Bush. Bush. Because he was handling the sale for Presley's and, you know, tried to see whether there was any interest with them to to get those vacated before they closed, but nobody ever really got back to me, so I don't know how they're describing what they're selling or whether they're selling the streets <coughs> and including that in their acreage or <laughs> not sure what they're doing. But, uh, Is it I, I was just I was just trying to think the real estate piece of it through we we have um, you know, have, have to do the vacation of the of the alleys and things, but the plat piece, I'm not, I'm not exactly sure. I think, I, I know it's been done before, and I don't know whether, I assume Jim and the auditor's office would have to be involved in, and, and maybe the land, maybe the new landowner would have to be, would have to request it, I guess I'm not sure, but. It was, it, once, once those alleys and, and easements are gone, it just well, then it comes down to an abstract. What would be the point in it at that? I, I guess I'm. That, well, or yeah, yeah. What's the value of even? Or what's the consideration of even having a different plot if it, it is all brought together through an abstract? Well, but I think right now legally they got to describe all these 
individual lots and lots lots as part of that whole description where if you vacated the plat, it would, it would clean up the abstract, I'm sure, quite a bit. But we wouldn't have time to have hearings and do that by close. No, no, no. Well, and I don't think that, from my perspective, I, that's not our concern. If we just do the alleys and things, that's, that's kind of an owner deal, that's isn't it? Just between. Well, the, the only other question I'd have there, and I guess I haven't talked to Ben or anybody about it, you know, since those, I don't know if you vacated the platting, whether you, then it would, you wouldn't have to vacate the streets and the alleys. I don't. Sure. No, you, you're you're going to have to give up your easement. Uh, otherwise, that's that's going to be hanging out there. I, I think, I think once that's done, then then then, then I think then I, then I think it becomes a from the abstract thing. I think is the alleys even maintained at all? Yeah. Or there's nothing there to. Well, you can see. You can see where they're at, but. You know. I think at one time this maybe it was a street, and, and they were sort of using it. this as a street too. And of course, this this street here goes back to the cemetery. And there's a cemetery back there. Uh, Looks but, like they're overgrown now. But like this, I think when Bud did a survey here, I think he surveyed down the middle of the street and actually included this, you know, with the, with the survey. This gal that lives up here is wanted is wanted these vacated. You know, some of this over here has actually been vacated before. It doesn't show up on this plot that way, but but I can't. I mean, this street goes back and serves uh, John Winkleman's good dot back in there, and then uh, Ben Renzi's. Ben Renzi's comes. He actually comes through the middle of this block and off this way, so I'm not sure whether he owns <laughs> this whole block or, or how that is. But I guess I envision vacating everything except this street. The street to the cemetery. And I think this landowner owns all this block, and this one owns all this block. You know, I, it looks like they're driving up through here. But so whether they would be receptive to vacating that, you know, I guess my intent would be to include almost everything except for those two streets that I talked about, and you can always vacate less. You can't vacate more. So. Uh, shouldn't be any uh, issues to her as long as they're not. Find out at the hearing and we got to set up and have a hearing and advertise yeah. and people yeah. are supposed to come in and they object to our action. Well, we need to run down and make sure we've got, um, well, I'll have to write this, a description for the, to, to publish for all those streets and alleys. And, A resolution, for, you know, to the board to set the you know, time of the date. A couple other things that I forgot to put on there before we get to the last one. There, uh, JPA ordinance. When I left Calhoun, they were in the process of, of waiving the the readings. There was nobody at the hearing, so I, I assume they they passed it. So. Uh, Mike, uh, Mike had looked into some pricing or some options on the signage that he was going to. We were just going to go ahead and order them. Uh, since there'd be freight on shipping them, we'll just order them up together and then bill Calhoun County for. But we're, we're probably going to use this one that says engine brake ordinance enforced, and I think the size is. I know the one the city's got out here. East of the old farm and out of the funeral home, just as you start down the hill, that's a 24 by 24 sign. So that's probably the same thing that we're going to look at order there. So, uh, so you just need one from the north and one from the south, yeah. and it's all right. Yep. Yep. Um, Calvin County uh, did have four dodge asphalt mill, two and a half miles of N28 south of Linton. I noticed that this morning. Uh, we uh, just traveling the. It's it's cupping from the north as well. It's not as bad, but I just when we had the rain, you know, this past week, I noticed I was floating around a little bit. Yeah. Um, so. 
I mean, that spot right there south of it, and that, that that's not deep enough. It's probably almost an inch deep. That was dangerous. It's really holding a lot of water. Yeah. Uh, Fort Digestible has got a new a new seven foot wide mill, and, and it did uh, what I thought was a real good job. Right, pretty nice, and, and I haven't seen it since. You know, until it rains, I guess you don't know whether it's going to hold it or not. But it, it looked like it. it took a good job of getting it. Shaved off, so we'll see what happens. But we'll probably have to look at doing either. Well, I guess some of our options would be to, to do a, a slurry leveling to, to try to fill the, the minor ruts in. Uh, whether we try to fill some more of them out. I think on the south end, down the next to 175, they're starting to get, you know, pretty deep down there too. But uh, we'll probably have to, if we, you know, do additional milling, or even on what we've done, probably have to do some kind of a asphalt. Um, I think they, they, you can do what they call a fog seal that rejuvenates the surface without uh, either that or, or something similar to a seal coat, just to rejuvenate and seal seal the surface of that asphalt off. So after you grind it, or yeah. Um, <coughs> item four there, the ditch clean. Um, I had, had, uh, three years ago when this issue had come up, I had done a survey of other counties to see, uh, whether there was uh, any code section out there that referred to this ditch cleaning and nobody that I talked to really could find or come up with a, a good deal on ditch cleaning. So I sort of compiled, I got had about a dozen responses. I tried to compile them uh, on the front page there. And then the, uh, my and, and we've had you know I, I, we've had this come up before and, and um, my my thoughts were that um, an easement is a rental which doesn't allow you to remove or sell property. And then you have the other side of it, which says that we have the ability to do the maintenance part of it. And um, my, my initial thought, and, and it kind of still is, that if, it, if push come to shove, the, the, the dirt piece it isn't ours, and that we would have the option to put it back over the fence, uh, or ask the owner um, if they. We 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 need to do this project now. We can either put it back over the fence, or or we haul it away, and and with some kind of interaction with either the the tenant or the owner, and uh, uh, but you can argue both sides of that. The second and third page in there are, are uh, the second page is a request from uh, Bob Story, the, at that time the Story County engineer, to the Story County attorney. And then the page behind that is, is the Story County attorney's response back to Bob. Um, and, and again, that's their county attorney's opinion at that time. I'm not sure. Again, this has been, well, that's an old letter. That goes back to 2005. Yeah, but that's a that's an ornament. I'm well, raising objection by rural residents who have placed large ornamental mailbox decorations in the road right away. Well, no, that's, he was just commenting that when Bob first went down there, he was he got after people that were building <laughs> structures. Yeah, I remember you talking about that. Right yeah. and, uh, I guess I'm not sure why he threw that comment in there. But, and then the, the sheet after that is Story County's policy, 
Uh, and then the last one I threw in there was uh, a policy from Tame County on cleaning the ditches. I got one from Story County. Tail Swanson. <laughs> he owns a lot of land on the trailer. He moved down Story County, he owns five, six thousand acres. Oh, oh the, uh, the letter, the request, I see, okay. From Dale Swanson. He moved from Eureka or Eden down to Story County. I see. But and again, you can look through all this information and see, but you know most of the of the responses that I got back in, in the policies that counties have, you know, the the, the dirt is normally used for, by the county if the county has need of it, uh, and then as an option they provide you know provide the adjoining landowner if disposal location is close and convenient. I guess I'm not sure. I like. Or I'm not sure what the intent was to provide to other governmental entities within the county. Uh, I, I'm not sure in what case you would want to provide it to another entity. I, I, I would, I would think, and I don't know where you would inquire, but there has to be some precedent saying where the ownership lies. Is is the product landowner, or is it is it? become available to the people removing it. There, somebody has to have the answer as to legally where the ownership of the, of the material is. And I, I, you know, you, you can, we can look at different, and, and we need to inquire, but that doesn't an, answer the legal question as, as to where the ownership is. Yeah, and I, you know, since you called last Friday, I hadn't had time to, and I had to talk to Ben at all to see whether he, you know, got a source that could, you know, but it seemed like everything, everything but by the last, the last name said there doesn't seem to be a code section that really addresses Well, and, that, and that's the, that's the problem, you know, it, 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 to me it all comes down to ownership of the dirt. If, 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 if it's, if it's in the right way and it's, it's, uh, Ownership to the county, then that's fine. If it's if it's not determined that it's ownership of the county, then then we have to react the other way. But if somebody needs to determine who owns it. <coughs> and I, you know, different counties can have different policies, and and that's okay until it's challenged. I I just I want a, an answer to where the ownership lies. Yeah, I. For what I've gotten so far, nobody really <laughs> spells it out black and white. <laughs> That's the problem. Uh, I mean, all these responses are, are, of course, from other county engineers, and they basically all say, you know, we can use it. It's in our right of way. We can use it for road purposes. Uh, that's where I get concerned about that one comment in there about providing it to other government entities. Mm -hmm. I, you know, well, and, and the, even uh, in that discussion about getting into transporting at different places. I, I mean, uh, if you take it out of there, that shouldn't be our responsibility to, to deliver it anyway. Well, and what if they stipulate, yeah, we do want you to dump it over the fence, but I want you to wait 40 days. That's another issue. Well, and so what if, so if they can't take it when we want to do it, you know, we got to haul it to our stockpile. I, or, I agree. And that gets to be you know, what's our formal policy? Do we take the word of the tenant that, yeah, go ahead, and then he comes back and says, oh, landlord didn't like it. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, that could happen, or they, they can make that happen. Absolutely. Well, as you read through some of these other comments, and, uh, and I haven't talked to Harrison County, but in the, in the BG County comment, uh, you know, he said his argument would be that if it's their dirt, then they need to remove it from the ditch at their expense. I think you'll find that Harrison County charges to clean ditches, which I have not to, to check that out or not. Well, that follows, yeah, you follow your, it was your, <coughs> your, your responsibility to get rid of it. They wouldn't like that. You well, know, and I, you, you I think that's... Our ditches, you let it erode into our ditches, so you take it back out. That, that's where the issue lies, that it, we have the responsibility, it's no different than a drainage system, <coughs> we have to maintain it, that's our charge. But. 
on the other hand, you can have a legal argument about a, a legal argument about who, where the ownership lies. And th that's why I, I'm, as I thought this through, I, I thought it was a reasonable thing to contact them and say the project is going to be done next week, and we have the option of either putting it over the fence or we can sort it all the way. And so I, I don't know. I mean, I, it's, it needs to be sorted out, and we need to to decide for sure uh, how we're going to handle it, because it keeps coming up. Well, and, and, and to me, this one is quite a bit different than the one we had three years ago. Where, it is. Where they were, I mean, they basically, you could argue that the ditch needed to be cleaned out, you know, to give more snow storage or, or it had been sold in, and, and, but there wasn't a, like in this case, I mean, it's, it was right out in front of crossroad culverts that were partially starting to sell in, and so there was definite you know, drainage advantages to where they were going. The one three years ago, it was on, you know going up that hill, and it wasn't drained whether or not they cleaned it out or not. Right. <coughs> and then uh, at that point, you know, the, the, the owner indicated that, that we had excessively removed yeah. material, too. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. You know, an issue that's kind of related to this is, you know, farmers farming more and more into the ditch. And you talk about, you know, I don't know how the engineers, but that's getting to be a pretty big, and they tear out the fence and every year the first row of corn gets another foot closer to the road. And it sometimes they're running over intakes and then they call us and tell us, you know, fix this intakes that, you know, something happened to <laughs> Where they covered up and they don't even know it's there anymore. Uh, well, it's just. I mean, I guess we could add a person full time just to go out and, and try to stake and, and, and check on where they are in the right way. I mean, it's nice when there's power poles there. At least they stay behind the power pole. At least most of them. Because that's not even happening now. Yeah, like south of Lytton, that one landowner, he weaves way out. And, and, and there's been some counties, and, and of course, the, if, 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 if you're going to do that, the, you know, the board has to really stand behind the county engineer, and, because the counties have gone out and sent the letters out and saying, hey, we're going to mow that down if you plant it in our road right away. And it, it's, I mean, in most cases, you know, if they're getting out there three or four feet, you know, it, it probably isn't going to be, you know, matter a whole lot, but when they start, you know, Impacting drainage structures that are there, or telephone pedestals are there, or you know, getting into other things. Uh, you know, again, the right way is, is is the width it was because at that time they determined that's what's how much right way they needed to get enough dirt to build the road up the way they wanted. Yeah. Uh, that's always been the practice to when you're going to build the road up, you buy more right way and take the dirt out of the right way to build the road up and. Yeah, when the, and the roads sink over time, so the dirt it kind of squishes out. And yeah. That's why it's got to be cleaned out. The roads settle, and some of that dirt just. Well, with time, the, the traffic, and especially if you get a lot of heavy traffic when it flood, it squishes the road bed out. And in any cases, you know, there's cases out there where <clears throat> when the roads were graded a number of years ago, they didn't, they didn't. Uh, Build them up high enough because now we have when we get the big rains, the water can't get through the culvert fast enough, so it runs over the top of the road. So in some of those cases, we try to you know build the road up. If it was a short section, we can build the road up you know a foot or so and, and, and keep it from running over the top. But, uh, I mean, I can I can uh, send a note to Ben and have Ben see whether he can come up with any other answers. I did. You, you had indicated you had visited with him. Oh, you didn't? I have. Okay. I thought you were going to. I was going to. Okay. Um, Ron might as well do it. I, I did have one county. I'm trying to remember what county it was now. Um, one county got an eight page ordinance that gets into, and I didn't even read all the way through it. I think that was Cedar Township, or Cedar County. And it gets into what? 
Well, it talks about farming in the right of way, and it talks about if this is next to a, a, a livestock facility and, and it's run off from the livestock facility that's getting into the road ditch, then they'll turn it into the county sanitarium to review, and, and if it's determined that it needs to be cleaned out, it's cleaned out at their expense. And even talks a little bit about, I, I, I'm just looking at the headings, uh, tile outlets and septic outlets that are you know, going into the road ditch. You know, we have a few of them out there too. Really shouldn't be, but anyway, if if you want to copy that, I can copy that for you too. But it is plain to read page long. I, I guess I I don't have any desire to go to that extent. But I this this issue, you know, we've had it pop up. It just ever so often it'll come up, and I don't know. We need to yeah, I don't know. Did you guys take a look at that intersection out there? Yeah, I, I looked at it. I took a couple more. pictures last week. And, it didn't dig that deep. Yeah, they didn't take a whole lot out. It looks like really shallow. I would, I guess well, and that's clearly a maintenance issue. Yeah. That's good. It's not like we took it to build a driveway. But... And, you know, we had, uh, in, in thinking about that, you, you, you have those issues, and, and we, were, we really need to sort this out because you, uh, under some circumstances, you, you, you know, you might have an individual that. Uh, that 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 fill or that dirt is, is hauled down the road somewhere, and first thing you know, then those folks don't get along, and then that accelerates the problem, and <laughs> and so uh, we we do really need to sort this out. And, and it's like a lot of things, you know. The more you get into it, you read through these, it gets you know, more complicated. The more you dig into it. Uh, I'll I'll know. contact Ben. Uh, see what he can see what he can see if he can share any light. Uh, I don't know that I'm gonna go up to ISAC this week. I didn't see anything on the engineer's agenda that really sparked my interest. Maybe you guys should uh, put that in the workshop. A future ISAC workshop. Yeah. You know, get with the oh, put, put on like a, yeah. it's spring or fall ISAC. Yeah, that we can all attend. That's a good idea. The thing, you know, you know, I don't know if the Farm Bureau would take a position on farming into the ditch. You know, uh, the pros and cons. Everybody wants snow removal, and they want it done. It's economical, but you know, in the same breath, they're filling the ditch full of dirt and making you know less and less of a place to pile it. <clears throat> I don't know. I mean, almost. Most of the time, the issue with the dirt and it's salt the right away is the drainage. It's basically more of a drainage issue than anything else. And, uh, but in, in our in our dozen years here, we've had times where that really didn't apply. Right. They, they're, they're just claiming to get fill for. Yeah. And so, I mean, we've kind of had the whole grommet of, of different situations and. and uh, well, you know the. They had a workshop, I don't know, seven, eight years ago. Lynn County <clears throat> put it on about right away, and people building big mailboxes and bridges mm -hmm. from their lawn across to the. And part of the, the thing that came out of that workshop is, you know, if you build an elaborate, heavy duty mailbox or, or bridge going out to it, and you, you're in the right of way, and some, somebody hits that. You know, you could be liable. I mean, your insurance company would have to, mm -hmm. if yeah. they could prove that, that my big heavy-duty bridge caused bodily harm, uh, regardless of whether it's legal, you know, whether we have an ordinance against that or... That's, that's, that that's true, and we, we, said, we sat in on that, and they were, and they were talking about the, maybe the, the stone or brick pillars for entrances to property. You know, they yeah. talked about all kinds or, of things. You know, landowner, <clears throat> farmer, uh, you know, a, a small parcel, landowner, rural uh, acreage. They, they start hauling masonry and, and logs or wood out in the ditch and burn it, but some of it's residually there. And it's the same thing. Yeah. You know, they just, I don't know, some landowners think it's their. They're right to haul their garbage out 
in the right of way and burn it, and the residue is still there. Then again, if somebody hit, it would hit that. You know, again, if, 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 if everything in the hollow burns up, it isn't quite so bad. But usually, there's other stuff in there too that doesn't burn up. And like you say, then it causes the destruction either the rock or pieces of or even tin, tin, garbage. You know. Yeah, and we spent a fair amount of money, you know, managing the road ditches in, in anticipation of drifting in the winter. You know, if that pile of debris starts a snow drift that goes across the road. You know, one of, one of the probably most common ones is, is uh, picking up rocks in the field and then dumping them, you know, at the end of a culvert or at, on the side of the driveway. And, yeah. and uh, again, it creates a hazard because a lot of times when they put the rock there, then all of a sudden instead of being a flat slope, then pretty soon they get it so it's <laughs> straight <up and> down. <laughs> okay. Well, thanks, Ron. Thanks, Ron. Thank you. Second up. Motion for A. 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 Motion for A.